A group of college friends gather after an eight-year separation to celebrate the impending wedding of one of them. Among the invitees is a strange kid named Forbes, who was once expelled from the college. Now he brings with him a suitcase with a new technology that allows people to switch bodies. Forbes suggests that all the guests play a kind of mafia game, swap bodies and guess who's in who. But the game, which starts out as a fun gag, quickly turns bad, when the dark secrets of the participants begin to come out. You can't teach an old dog new tricks, and Netflix, one of the first to jump on the crest of the liberal Western agenda, seemed to put any idea through its lens. The authors of the psychological thriller It's What's Inside, having found a really cool story, came up with nothing better than to use it to tell another progressive story about strong and independent women who punish weak, cowardly men for their vices. In this respect, It's What's Inside is strongly reminiscent of another recent film, Blink Twice, Despite fundamentally different plots, the films have similar ideas, endings, and even a tone that is slightly elevated above reality, emphatically satirical and generously laced with black humor. Also in both film sex and sexual relationships play a key role, in its what's inside there is no graphic violence, as in Zoe Kravitz's film, but plenty of gaslighting, insincerity and abusive behavior, for which some characters will have to pay. The technology of body swapping, on which the authors of the movie build the plot, opens up a lot of opportunities for the heroes, but writer and director Greg Jardin reduces the story to two classic issues, sex and power. Having swapped bodies, the friends begin to close old institute gestalts about who hasn't slept with whom in their time, and taste fame, among the characters there is a blonde influencer Nikki, any selfies of whom provokes millions of her subscribers to rapturous hysterics. There are no superstars among the cast, but at least Alicia Debnam Carey, James Morosini and David Thompson are very good and make the most of the opportunity to portray several different characters at once. About halfway through the movie, a turning point occurs that aggravates the characters and turns a seemingly harmless entertainment into a game of survival. Everyone has to decide in whose body they want to spend the rest of their lives. Greg Jardin is masterful at building suspense and keeping it unpredictable, and while one may disagree with the conclusions he reaches, there's nothing stopping one from appreciating the beauty and finesse with which he hooks our attention. This is especially cool considering that the characters spend most of their time out of their bodies, and Jardin needs to not only tell a story, but also remind us who's who here, which he solves with groovy visual montage techniques. In general, visual editing techniques in its what's inside play a very important, almost decisive role, so much so that at times it seems as if Jardin, a clipmaker by first profession, has invented a new film language, built on dynamic camera movement, bright neon accents and an unexpected soundtrack. Particularly delightful are the clips with inventive photo collages, which are used here to design flashbacks, it's elegant, fresh and very stylish. These three words describe its what's inside best of all. It's a big video clip, which has no special depth, but which you watch in one breath, that hypnotizes with its colorful eclecticism and will surprise even hardened film buffs.